Well, most people aren't born into the beauty business, but Hillary Levy Friedman was. Hillary is the daughter of Miss America 1970. She's a professor at Brown University and a frequent commentator on beauty pageants and feminism. And best of all, she's a native Detroiter. Hi, Hillary. Great to be here. Yeah, Hillary is joining us today from her home in Rhode Island, where she now lives. Hillary, we're just glad you could join us. Your new book, uh, you're the author of Here She Is, The Complicated Reign of the Beauty Pageant in America. In your book, you say that beauty pageants have empowered the feminist movement. And I think a lot of people might be taken aback by that comment. Explain yourself. Well, here's a really good example. In September 1968, there was a big protest outside of the Miss America pageant, which is considered one of the foundational events of second wave feminism. And the feminists chose to do that on the boardwalk in Atlantic City because Miss America had such a wide viewership and so many people look to it, you know, often as an ideal, but also sometimes as problematic. And so that's a really good example that the feminist movement was able to use Miss America as a springboard to elevate their own message. Uh, is that the is that the one where they had the photograph of the woman and they had the parts of the body uh, uh, written on her back? I think it was right. Yes, and it's the source of the pejorative term "bra burners." Although they didn't actually burn oh. bras on the boardwalk, they were too much of good girls still because they didn't have the permit. <laughs> but that is the source of the term "bra burner." Yeah, what would that? It would be a real. Pearl clutcher, wouldn't it, if they've seen uh, some of the protests recently with the vagina hats and some of the other things, right? Things have changed a little bit, especially yeah. since we ratified the 19th Amendment in 1920, celebrating 100 years of that. So I'm sure some of those women would have definitely clutched their pearls, but also they'd be happy that women are out there and able to vote. Make sure you vote. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Hillary, how did pageants start? Let's get an idea of a little bit of a history, a little bit of a background on uh, Wasn't it really all about beauty? And it kind of reminds me of the original uh, reality TV show, really. Yeah, well, pageants organized beauty contests go back a long ways in the United States. So actually, the first one was in 1854, started by P.T. Barnum. You know, he had started at his American Museum in New York contest for poultry and dogs and even flowers. And he was like, hey, I should get women in on the action here. He had a strong reaction. People were like, women should not be in public being judged based on how they look. So he pivoted and turned that into essentially a photo contest. He also started really popularized baby shows in the 1850s as well. Uh, so there were beauty contests long before Miss America came along, and a lot of people are surprised by that. Now, they've certainly changed a lot. I know that they had, when was the peak of viewership for Miss America on television? Because I know it's not there anymore, but when was the peak? It was in the early 1970s, but in 19, throughout the 50s and 60s, it was a top 10 show every single year. Oh, I know. I think a lot of families, you know, had the little uh, uh, papers that they would also, you know, uh, score the young women also. It was also a very different beauty pageant. Your mom won in 1970, Pam Eldred. Uh, she, she won in 1970, but today it's a very different. Do a little bit of a comparison here from 1970 to today. Well, first of all, my mom, who was Miss Michigan, she was Miss Detroit and then Miss Michigan, she actually won the preliminary swimsuit competition. Today, there is no swimsuit competition anymore in the Miss America pageant. Um, she also, she had a platform issue in a sense because my aunt, Mel Melanie, uh, was born with severe developmental delays and my mom's final question was about her sister and she mm -hmm. talked about that. So it became like an unofficial platform for her. She became a spokesperson for March of Dimes and that sort of thing. But it wasn't until the late 1980s that Miss America had this portion. They now call it a social impact initiative, but it's a cause or charity that each contestant needs to go out there and advocate for. And before that, it was just all about your looks, right? Your beauty, your appearance, and the, well, maybe winning the scholarships. Well, the scholarship was a big part of it. So if you want to compare what really truly is a beauty pageant and still calls itself a beauty pageant and celebrates that, that would be Miss USA. So Miss USA came out of the Miss America pageant in the 1950s 
when the winner didn't want to appear in her bathing suit. And so Catalina, the swimsuit company was like, oh uh, yeah, we'll go start our own thing. And so that's a big difference. And it's not just the tuition, the opportunity for scholarships, but Miss America has a talent portion, whereas Miss USA doesn't. So there it has always been this sense since the late 1930s that yes, it's still how you look, but it's also about what you can do with your body as well. Uh, you mentioned another uh, Miss Michigan and Miss U, uh, Miss America winner, and that from Michigan, and that's Kaylin uh, Kaylani Ray Rafko. And I've had the opportunity to interview her in the past as well. She not she did not necessarily promote a cause, as you say in the book. She promoted her career. Talk about that a little bit. That's right. Kehlani was actually a huge inspiration for what became this platform issue because she went out there and she, some people say she really helped solve the nursing shortage nationwide. Um, and she was really focused on how do we care for people that was sort of um, leading to the height of the HIV AIDS epidemic. So she was really out there in that and her work was really important. Now, I remember when Kehlani was crowned because I was sitting in my living room with my mom and my grandparents and uh, mom has never let me live this one down but when Kehlani won I was so excited and I turned to my mom and I said now I can meet a real Miss America oh so. no Hillary yeah. <laughs> she's never let me live that one down but I was so excited that there was a Miss Michigan who was Miss America <laughs> and again she brought up topics that were not typical to Miss America as you say in the book she talked about AIDS, HIV, cancer, hospice, death, dying. These were not typical uh, topics that were discussed at Miss America. That's right. I mean, that's one really interesting thing. You know, there is this stereotype out there about a beauty pageant winner. And, you know, in some sense, some of, in some sense, some of that is rooted in fact. Although most people think they're blonde winners, I actually find that most of them are brunette winners. But there is such a variety within the winners of Miss America. I mean, we, several Miss Americas made AIDS, their platform issue, AIDS awareness and prevention, whereas we've had other Miss Americas who were advocating for abstinence and all of those sorts of things. So there really is a mix of the issues that they're out there on, but they make a difference whether it's veterans issues or nursing or um, domestic violence awareness or childhood prevention of sexual abuse. And you also do spend some time talking about Miss America uh, uh, Vanessa Williams, who was the first Black Miss America, and the problems that came under her reign and uh, the very difficult, difficult times for her. Yes, yeah, so of course, Vanessa Williams was the first Black Miss America. She also became the first and only Miss America who lost her crown. So she was quote unquote dethroned about six weeks before the end of her reign and she had had an amazing year. I mean, on the one hand, she was totally celebrated, so talented, so beautiful, you know, really shattering an important, um, marking an important barrier. milestone. Yes, thank you, shattering a ba barrier. Um, but by the same token, when she traveled in the American South, she needed security guards, she faced death threats, her family in New York did as well. And so some people say, you know, she was, people were looking for something wrong with her and that led to the release of these photos in Penthouse. Um, and it's just a very interesting case because it's wrapped up in notions of femininity, in race, and also sexuality because the pictures, um, she was, she was photographed with another woman in sexual positions. And so there was a lot going on and in the 1980s. That was a time of identity politics as well. Of course, Vanessa Williams has gone on probably to be the most successful Miss America ever and uh, still has an amazing career, Tonys, Emmys, Grammys. Yeah. So uh, she did OK. <laughs> yeah, I would say she did OK. Hey, and all the research you did on the Miss Americas, was there anyone that surprised you? Well, so there's one woman who I think of as, you know, sort of the Miss America, and her name is Lenora Slaughter. And she was brought to Atlantic City in the 1930s to run the Miss America pageant. Um, and she ran the Miss America pageant until the late 1960s. It's because of her that the scholarship was introduced. It's be her, because of her that talent was introduced. But, you know, like most of us, she was imperfect. She also introduced something called Rule 7, which in the 1940s said all the contestants had to be um, of good health and the white race. 
And so it's taken a long time, you know, it took till 1984 for there to be the first Black Miss America. So Lenora Slaughter was very interesting to me. I went and saw her personal papers at the Smithsonian Museum, found the original letter that she did coming up with the idea for the scholarship. So that was very interesting to get to know her better. And I, in reading uh, through the book, I thought it was interesting that in some cases, uh, the crown changed the woman, but in other cases, the woman changed the crown. And you gave us the example, of course, of Kaylani Ray Rafko from Michigan, and uh, of course, Vanessa Williams, there were others. Who sticks out in your mind? Well, I have to say, because life is very strange, not only am I the daughter of a Miss America, but I taught Miss America 2018, Cara Mund, when she was a student at Brown University. So wow. she, was my, she was in my first ever seminar called Beauty Pageants in the American, and Beauty Pageants in American Society. So that was in fall 2015. Um, and I ended up going to support her when she competed at Miss North Dakota. And then I was there in Atlantic City when she won Miss America, which was one of the top five coolest things I've ever experienced, honestly. But her year was so interesting because, first of all, she was first winner from North Dakota, first Ivy League graduate to win. Uh, and during her year was the year of Me Too. The CEO of Miss America was ousted for these emails in which she spoke disparagingly of former Miss Americas. Gretchen Carlson came in to take over, and that's when the bathing suit competition was eliminated. So uh, Carr is definitely someone who I, she was amazing before, and then uh, the crown has changed her life in various ways. And I will say too, whenever I see a clip of my mom winning, uh, it still gives me chills because it's the moment when you know someone's life changed forever. And that's how I feel about Cara. And we just, we don't get that opportunity to see a moment when people's lives change so up close and personal. And I think that's why that moment of crowning is often parodied, you know, fake crying or, you know, making dramatic faces, but it's really something exceptional to see in someone's life. Everything will be different after that second when your name is announced. Absolutely. Hillary Levy Friedman, author of Here She Is, there's the book, The Complicated Reign of Beauty Pageants in America. Hillary, a wonderful book and dedicated, of course, to your mom, Pat, Pam Eldred, a wonderful woman. I'm glad to say that I know her. And uh, congratulations on a very good book. And we're so proud of you here in the metro area. You're one of us. Thank you so much. I got to say, I really miss my Detroit area restaurants, especially during the pandemic. I've had to order some of my favorite Detroit food delivered to Rhode Island. Uh, okay. Listen, we expect to visit them because they're going to be, well, a lot of them are open, of course, now. But when we get back to more of a semblance of order, please come back and visit. We love you, Hillary. Take care. Thank you.